Welcome, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. You're listening to the uh, Women's Broadcast Television Expert Spotlight Show. WBTN is the all-women's internet, internet television station with content that's created by women and for women. And I'm your host today, Shayvon. Let me tell you a little bit about WBTVN's expert uh, today. Karen Lee is an uh, experienced public speaker, workshop leader, instructor, and public author. She is a dual Canadian-British citizen who grew up in southern Ontario, Canada, and got her, and got her BA trained as a teacher and taught school in Toronto. Karen, I'm, we've had trouble getting together, so I need to say, because our time frames have been so difficult, but I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. And tell us a little bit about um, your childhood growing up and how you got to where you are today. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me on the program. I'm really pleased to uh, be sharing uh, some of my life with you. Um, yeah, it's an interesting story in a way, and it was such an interesting story that I decided to write a book about it. But when I grew up in Ontario, I grew up in a very conservative home uh, in the sense that we didn't, um, uh, didn't socialize very much. My parents were both very, very introverted and a little nervous, and they had had some trauma in their own backgrounds. So... Uh, we certainly had uh, everything you need. We lived in a very large home, but it was way out in the country, and people couldn't just kind of drop in. So, um, you know, it was uh, kind of drummed into me from a very early age to do well in school, kind of mind your P's and Q's, go to church, go to school, do what you're told, and uh, life would simply unfold as it should. And of course, often that doesn't happen. Okay. It worked for them. <laughs> I can just see your life being that little soldier, you know, doing everything, everything right. But you're right. There's, you know, things that come into our life that just isn't traditional. And we have to make choices and we have to figure out a way to get through them. So share yeah. that. Yeah. Well, and I think that uh, while my parents certainly were very well intentioned, uh, learning to soldier through life is not a very good way of dealing with some of life's uh, larger traumatic things. And um, I did marry very soon after uh, achieving my bachelor's degree, and I moved to Toronto. And I had a very uh, good career and successful career that I loved as a junior high uh, school teacher. But I had married somebody that um, came from a similar background in the sense of poor family communication. So we were thrown together. We didn't know how to talk to each other, how to work out issues. Um, there was a lot of um, uh, not out and out fights, but certainly arguments, and we never seemed to be able to straighten those things out. Yeah. Uh, we were very poorly matched. I wanted certain things that he didn't want. Um, I loved to read and discuss, and uh, he just liked to put the nose to the grindstone and, you know, soldier on as, as I had been brought up. And it wasn't a very good um, formula for a happy marriage, let's put it that way. A relationship for seasons instead of a relationship for life. Yes, exactly. Or for reasons, yeah, you know. Maybe exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had to learn something there. And uh, as I say, I did very well as my, uh, uh, in my career as a teacher and loved it. Uh, we bought a home in Toronto, which you can't even do anymore because it's so expensive. And we uh, worked together fixing it up. I had a wonderful job. We had our first son. I had lots of friends and I had my family around me, not just my parents, but my sister right. and aunts and uncles and lots of support. Uh, my husband was very unhappy in his position and wanted to move far away to Calgary, which um, is 2,400 miles from Toronto. So nothing would do, but we had to move there. And so uh, 
I must say, under duress, I moved to Calgary. The marriage deteriorated even further, as you can well imagine, because I didn't have those supports around me. Right. We no longer owned our own home. I didn't have the wonderful job I loved. I didn't have my friends and family near to hand. So things deteriorated even, even more so, and we ended up, um, well, in a very bad situation. And I, I outline that in my book, The Full Catastrophe, a little bit, just the end of that marriage. Um, I wrote the book because I wanted to make sense of how uh, a woman such as myself, um, intelligent, uh, reasonably well-educated, loving her career, having these lovely, by that time, two little boys, could have ended up in a situation where um, it was a very brutal end to our marriage. And uh, that just threw me off course, absolutely off course. I had uh, gotten another job, switched careers completely, went to work for an oil company because those are the big employers in Calgary. Exactly. And uh, did very well as a geological technician. It wasn't my forte. It wasn't my natural bent. But, you know, it was a job and, uh, you know, I did very well in it. At the end of my first marriage, though, most of our income, family income, walked out the door. Because when often there is a big gap between what a woman makes and what a man makes. So going from a $70,000 family income down to a $20,000 household income was quite a shock and put me into a very bad financial shape. Um, but I loved my, my work. I loved my children. I continued uh, working and then met my second husband who came in like a knight on shining armor, very handsome, a PhD, a very important job in an oil company, very cultured, uh, he read widely, he did Tai Chi, seemed like the perfect partner, but he wasn't. And pretty soon I realized that he was um, a very controlling man. So I almost, I, very different look. The husbands were very, very different. But the problems were very similar. Yeah. That I ended up with somebody who was very critical. When he didn't get his own way, he screamed and yelled and um, broke furniture in public and in private. Wow. But at this point, I thought... I'm sitting here thinking anger management sounds like that. <laughs> no, he, he went to counseling. Okay, good. But it, it didn't really make any difference. Okay. And um, so we were in this very difficult marriage, which at that point I felt I couldn't exit. The good thing was he supported me in going back to university and becoming a psychologist. That's so good. I became a chartered psychologist in Alberta. And uh, we had our own business. Uh, so he was my business partner. And we did a lot of um, consulting to large organizations. We were very successful. Uh, change management, which was very popular then, as it is now. And uh, the two of us made a very good team. And no one looking on the outside could ever tell that there was a problem. Because oh. we were very, very professional. Very good at what we did. Had lots of clients. And I hid it well. I went right back to my early childhood training of you soldier on, you make the best of it, you've made your bed, you have to lie in it, exactly. and you know there's nothing you can do. And by this time, we had a blended family of three boys who depended on us. Of course. We had a very exciting opportunity to move to England. So in 1995, we moved to England and I continued the um, consulting and my husband had a very good position at a, a very prestigious business university. And we were living the high life. We were flying all over. We were consulting all across uh, Western and Eastern Europe. I made trips to the Middle East to consult the Far East, uh, Hong Kong, 
uh, South Korea, Singapore. Um, I've been, I've traveled for work and I've traveled for pleasure many, many times. So again, looking from the outside, you'd think, wow, this couple has it all. Gotcha. And things deteriorated behind closed doors, as they often do. And uh, I got some counseling and the counselor said, get out. He's not going to change. But you need to get yourself back on track, basically. Mm -hmm. At that point, my husband was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Oh, wow. So fate dealt... uh, uh, a totally unexpected blow. And eight months later, after, well, first I had asked him and said I wanted a divorce, got the counseling. He was diagnosed with cancer. Of course, I stayed with him to support him through that. Of course. And um, he passed away in the summer of uh, 1999. Mm-hmm. Me thinking, okay, all the problems are over. But I had sense enough to go to a wonderful Jungian analyst in London who supported me, counseled me for the next four years. Because what I've realized in my life and in my work is that when you go through traumatic experiences, it's not enough to get out. You have to heal. You do, yes. There's, there, there's no question about it. And people don't realize that, Karen. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, you think, okay, I've, you know, I, I know what I want. This isn't working. You know, right. I'm listening to what somebody else is telling me. You know, they've got more experience than I do. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to take that, that advice because I'm not happy. I've been putting this false face on forever to the right. world. And, and having a great time and traveling all over and, and having money that, you know, I didn't have in my other marriage. Right. So that was, a, that was a benefit, but it still was controlling and it certainly was not uh, a loving relationship that it sounds mm-hmm. like that you were looking, you know, looking for. And yet there still were those three little boys that you had to have, you know, responsibility for and to try to make as good a home as you possibly can. But I want to tell you, it's not as easy to go through. And I know there's a lot of women that's, that's listening to us out there. And I want you to know that what we're really talking about is that you can put that face on. You can have, kids always know. Yes. There's something wrong and that you're not happy. Mom's not happy. Dad's not happy. And, and therefore, guess what? They're not happy. And we're teaching them how to put up with something that doesn't need to be. And many times we do it for all the right reasons. And part of that is, well, they're going to get, you know, I'm, I can get through this. They're going to grow up. They're going to get, you know, a little bit older. It's going to be easier. No, 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 no. It does not get easier. Actually, the older they get, the harder it gets to do those things because they can adjust a whole lot easier younger, as I'm sure you found out with your first two boys, than after this happened. Of course, they saw what you did show them, which I think is is great, is that when help was really needed because of the cancer and what he was going through, that he wasn't going to get kicked to the curb. And you know what I'm saying to you, and that there was um, a certain amount of, you know, of um, something with inside of us that says we, we need to make the right choices here. This isn't all about me and my happiness right now. That's right. That no. Sending a hand out to someone that needs it and, and not making it worse because that would have, in my opinion, probably uh, made it worse. And I think that the, the great example that you, that you, um, that you, were out there to 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 help the boys see that you were there when the time was needed is a great gift that I'm sure that they'll they'll carry throughout their lives. So, well, I hope so. I think uh, I think if I could uh, give any message, and and my work now uh, on the board of the uh, peer support services for abused women is that we do have to um, stop faking it. Yeah, we do need to look really at what our lives are about. 
And if we're in a very, very difficult to the point of abusive marriage, we need to make those decisions that are good for ourselves because ultimately, yes, the children do notice. Now, by the time my husband passed away, our boys were pretty much, you know, in university and, and on their own. Um, but you're right. I still had their well-being that I had to take into consideration. Absolutely. And I also had to be able to look myself in the mirror and say, <laughs> I didn't abandon him, <laughs> though I might have wanted to. <laughs> I get it. But that doesn't come without, you know, having regrets and um, not doing the right thing isn't going to give us happiness. Uh, and I think sometimes we have to sit and kind of say to ourselves, what if this was turned around? What would we need? You know, what kind of support we would need and what would we want to happen? Especially since obviously he had this very short time that he was, you know, that he was going to be living. So, yeah. but now you think that everything is okay and and it's not so take me to the next chapter well i realized by the time he did pass away that i had undergone undergone so much and um i was basically in shock to be quite honest so i was thrown into widowhood which is difficult enough as it is but also the realization had already hit me before he was ill that I needed to get out, that this was an abusive marriage. And so I realized that I needed help and I needed to heal because I'll tell you, I was very, very frightened that I might pick another. Exactly. Your record, your record wasn't real good. After that. No, it wasn't. And the first go around, the first time uh, I was married and my husband left, I was in such turmoil, such shock, that I didn't stop to make the obvious decision that I needed to heal. Yeah. I didn't heal. I didn't. I went not that, I mean, I didn't marry for another three years, but not that, nonetheless, I did not heal before I married my second you husband. Give your time, you didn't give yourself time enough to, it's healing, but it's time, it's time that we need to take sometimes to just be on our own, really understand what it is that we're looking for. What, yeah. you know, we have the right to be able to write down what are, what's important in a relationship and what yeah. are we looking for in that instead of, oh, somebody comes along, so this looks like this is good. And we find ourselves in the same kind of situation. So I totally mm -hmm. understand, Karen, exactly, you know, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I think that many times you see that more than not. Yes. Like picking, you know, and someone similar, uh, different qualities, different things. Um, but, um, you know, the other thing I think, too, that you said is that living that high life and getting to travel and having all the money in the world does not make us happy people. And there's two things where women are concerned. Number one, you're right. We do not need to stay in situations that we should not be in because it doesn't help anyone. No. The martyr does not teach our children how to take care of themselves. And if we saw them in those kinds of a situation, we would, as a parent, a loving parent, we would tell them to get out. Yes. And so, you know, they would want to tell us that, and many times do tell their parents that. And they, the parents don't listen because they don't think they really understand. They understand a whole lot more than we give them credit for. That's number one. Number two, I think, is that women find it very difficult. They need help, but they don't always ask for it. And they're not really good at collaboration to be really honest with you. You know, they want to collaborate, they want to bring other, you know, people into their lives or whatever, but you know, maybe it comes from fear because they're hiding so much and not being truthful about mm -hmm. who they are, yes. or they feel ashamed if they were to, you know, let that known. I can think of all kinds of things that we, we hide behind. And the truth of the matter is, the only thing anybody ever wants is just let us know who you really are because you're not alone out there. There's other people that have followed in those same footsteps, that have had the same problems, that are embarrassed, that are, you know, wish they had done something different, but they don't have to have the regret of it. If they can learn how to forgive themselves, actually helps them to learn how to forgive others, and that's even more important. Yeah. Um, 
because as much as we think that we do that, we don't. Um, but collaborating and really loving someone because you want to bring more people into yourself instead of finding people that we consider to be in competition with us mm -hmm. is just the right, the wrong angle from every place that we're coming from. And until we learn that lesson, we're going to continue to repeat our mistakes in that. Yeah. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, certainly growing up in the 50s and 60s, I think uh, you're right. I don't think women did collaborate as much. I think that's part of the benefit of the women's movement, if you will, to raise awareness that women can be friends. They're not our enemies. They're not our competition. Uh, but I think they're also, and, and certainly this is true for women who have, have it all who think they have it all. Who think they do, yeah. Yeah, and they don't want to let other people know. I was talking to somebody recently who um, changed careers. He was a hairdresser, and he said, women will tell their hairdresser how unhappy they are, but they will not tell their friends. It, it's so true. My mother was a hairdresser from the time she was 13. And, yeah. um, I mean, you're absolutely right. She made She actually ended up coming from Canada and taking my sister and I, raising us without any money. She had maybe some change in her pocket. And uh, she, at the end of it, the, good, the end of that story is that she owned, uh, I can't remember if it was two or three beauty shops. I think it was three and a beauty school. And she made all of us go through beauty school to get our cosmetology license. Irregardless of what we were going to be doing in life, we would have something to, to come back on. And I yeah. can tell you firsthand, because I did here for years and I taught, they will tell you everything. Yes. Absolutely right. They will not tell their doctor, they will not tell their friends, and they no. will not tell their family. They'll no. definitely tell their hairdresser. Yeah, there's so, actually, oh, sorry, there's actually been a very good research book uh, done by a woman, a PhD psychologist in Chicago, called Not to People Like Us, exactly. meaning, if you are in this envied position of a lovely home, a full length mink coat, uh, an exciting career, lots of travel, your children are in good schools, the assumption is no abuse could possibly be happening in that house. Yeah, exactly. And but it's as likely to happen as a, a poorer person. It, it, exactly, and uh, we never know what goes on beyond behind closed doors. No. Anyway, in no, every kind don't. of situation. But I, you know, I I know that we're running out of time. I just I love your story. I I love your all the things that you've you you've done and come through and are out there now helping other women to mm -hmm. be themselves and tell their stories. Yes. And, and not be afraid to step forward and take the responsibility that you're really helping yourself, which is going to help other people, which we talked about. So yes. um, anything else that you would like to add before we um, say, uh, you know, before we say goodbye? Well, I don't have a copy right in front of me, but I did write my book, a memoir. It just came out in April. It's called The Full Catastrophe. And uh, it's on Amazon and Kobo and Kindle and all of that. And for anyone who doesn't understand what it's like to be in a difficult marriage or what it takes to get out, um, I think this could be helpful for women. Well, I, I know that it could. And they can also, you have a website they can go to to find you? Yes, Karen E. Lee-Author.com. And I'm also on Facebook, Karen E. Lee Author. Right. Well, let's connect on, on Facebook because I don't think we are connected. So oh, okay. and we'll ask the audience that's listening to us uh, to do the same uh, for both of us. Anyway, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you uh, for your time, your story, and, uh, and your wisdom. And I want to thank everyone for joining us here today at WBTVN Expert Spotlight Show. And if you're interested in uh, having an interview or sharing your story, please go to WBTVN.TV and fill out the form and we will definitely uh, get back to you. Until then, I thank you. Take care. And thank you. <laughs>